Last week we finished up our series on meaningful friendship, taking a look at uh, practices that we have within our tradition that help us experience a consistent sense of renewal and, and starting fresh with faith and, and moving closer and closer to what God has called us to be. This week we're starting a new series in, in, uh, in Lent. And I'm actually excited about it. Something I've wanted to do for a while, and this is a perfect opportunity to do so. Uh, as Don you know, said earlier, um, when we go through the season of Lent, it's a season of uh, reflection, meditation, it's a season of repentance. Um, and if you were listening to Chip Winston, that sense of repentance um, is, is less the fist pumping in the yard, repent kind of a thing, and it's more of a it's a change of heart. It's moving beyond who you are to what you're called to be. It's cutting out those things that are holding us back and making room for something new. So we change our heart. We change our mind. We change our perspective. And then the result of that is that we change our lives. And so we have this season of the year that very much encourages that in our faith journey. But there's also moments throughout the year. We do one of them monthly. That if we take the time to really let it sink in the depth of what these moments in our worship and our lives mean, we experience it, that humility, we experience that reflection, we experience that change over and over again. And I think Lent is a great time to like, take a look at some of these things. Today we're going to take a look um, at foot worship. Uh, over the next few weeks, we're also going to take a look at things like baptism and communion. And really try to flesh out a little bit about, you know, uh, unpacking some layers of meaning and layers of, of depth to what those moments do for us in our faith. Now, that may seem, how many of you have ever been part of a foot washing ceremony? Okay, just a couple of them. It's not an extraordinarily Methodist thing to do. Uh, you can see it every now and then. Um, Baptist church tends to do, do it a lot more often. I think uh, the Catholic church a lot of times will have that as part of a Monday, Thursday service. Um, but the act of foot washing is a very, very profound one. And we're going to take a minute, we're going to uh, go th look, look at this a little bit um, and what it means for us in our daily life. Now, how many of you, when somebody has come into your house, have pulled off their shoes and gave their feet a good scrub? Anybody? I've never done it myself. The closest I ever came to it is when I was younger, I had a really bad, funky foot odor problem, and someone sprayed my feet with Lysol in their house after I took off my shoes. But I don't think that was so much service as it was survival of any part. <laughs> so we don't really see it happen that much anymore. But what I want to do is give us a contemporary reference for the fact that this uh, tradition, this custom that we see goes all the way back to Abraham, still has fallout even today. How many of you, when you've walked into somebody's house, have said, would you like me to take my shoes off? Or where can I put my shoes? Is that pretty common? Okay. Now, why do we do that? Say it. So you don't track the dirt in. Exactly. There's a sense that, you know, when we enter somebody else's abode, when we enter their house, there is a protocol that says, I respect you, I love you, thank you for inviting me in, and I am not going to bring anything from the outside world that is going to tarnish this. When we look at Moses when he went to the, the burning bush, what did the burning bush say? What did God say to him as he's approaching the bush? Take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And there's this sense that for whatever reason, that whenever we enter into sacred space, we try not to track in the things that are going to sully it, that are going to soil it. And that, that, that is very present as far back as Moses. And while we don't think of it that way, the sentiment still stands today when we go into someone's house. Now, you may not scrub somebody's feet now, but when 
when somebody comes into your home, especially if they've journeyed after a long trip, what do you typically do? Offer them something to eat? What else? Offer them something to drink? Yeah, you, you may wash up. Hey, can I hang up your coat? Do you need to use the restroom? So we have these customs that are very much entrenched in hospitality. We don't have a sense of needing to wash each other's feet whenever someone comes to our home. But we do recognize that there is something special about that relationship. There's something sacred about that relationship. And so we extend a sense of welcome and a sense of hospitality. And we see this as far back as Abraham. Abraham has these, these three angels come to visit him. And, um, and I, uh, there she is. I guess in Sunday school this morning, there's a chuckle over the fact that, uh, that Abraham you know, sent them off with pancakes when they, uh, when they got there. Um, but, but there's this sense of urgency to take care of. Now, we might think that, that Abraham had a recognition that these, these men were sent in a divine sense, that these men were sent as representatives of God, and so he was just kind of kissing up a little bit to, uh, to get on their good side. But the reality of it is there was a very serious sense of hospitality and welcome. That it was a great shame to have somebody come under your roof and to not provide for them, to not do something to make them feel comfortable, do something to make them feel welcome, help them realize that they are valued and they're cared for. And so Abraham does this in grand form back in the book of Genesis. And what we see is this sense of love and gratitude for these people coming under his roof. Uh, the sense of compassionate connection with somebody that's coming into in the relationship, we see this echo even when we look in the New Testament. Because we see something here when Jesus is in the house of Simon. And he's sitting there and the lady comes in and she gets on her knees and she weeps over his feet and dries his feet, dries the tears with her hair, and then pours perfume on his feet as well. And Simon says, what are you doing? And Jesus' response is this. You didn't even offer me a bowl of water to wash my feet. And what I get from that is there's a sense of, look, you didn't even think enough to offer to do the basic standard custom when somebody enters your house to wash my feet. And now you're going to get on her for going above and beyond and honoring that custom of hospitality and welcome. And I think that, for, for me anyway, as I look at that moment, what I realize is that the custom is a symbol of something great. There's something spiritual, there's something inside of us that we are to cultivate, and then that sense of hospitality is an expression of it. Washing the feet is an expression of love, is an expression of thanksgiving. And so when, you know, when Jesus looks at Simon, it's not he's saying, my feet are dirty, why didn't you wash that? He's saying, you're missing the base inspiration and attitude of servanthood and humility and love for the other. And it shows because you haven't even observed this most basic and simple custom. And these things are, you know, sometimes we think they're small, but they are important. I mean, think about it. If you've just driven six hours and didn't get to stop on the way, is your belly rumble? Probably. If most of your travel is by foot and you're in bare feet or sandals and it's all dirt, how do you think your feet are going to be feeling after you get to your destination? Let me ask you this. If somebody came to your home, with gnarled up, dusty, nasty, cracked, funky feet. Would you be the first one to jump up and say, let me watch them bad boys for you? <laughs> you know? It, it, it's, it's not, you know, the, there's that, that sense of getting over ourselves and saying, you know, this is about more than crusty toenails. 
This is about more than a parched throat. This is about more than a grumbling belly or an overbloated bladder. This is, this is about relationship and the sacredness of those relationships. And one of the dangers we can get into is that we perform these actions without the thought and inspiration that goes behind them. You know, Simon didn't even perform the act. And he got kind of pulled up by Jesus and made an example of him that that lady was using for perfume to wash his feet. Um, but I think a good example illustration of this is um, you can get a little education on a, a popular program if you're not already familiar with it. How many of you watch The Big Bang Theory? Okay. If you do this, <laughs> some find it funnier than others. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the show, it's a story about uh, four geniuses uh, who were trying to make their way through their world, make their way through relationships and social situations. And uh, as smart as they are in physics and engineering, in terms of love and life, they are about as bumbling as you can find. And the main guy...
He goes to the disciples. And, and for John, this is profound enough that he doesn't mention communion. When we were looking at the book of John, we, we, we met, I, I mentioned this. If John was the only gospel we had, we wouldn't have communion. We would have foot washing. In John, this moment where Jesus does this act, he washes their feet. Uh, and on, on some levels, you know, some people gravitate towards the cleansing act of the cross. But what I want us to look at today is what he, he's doing is he's serving them. He's humbling himself before them. He is showing them a profound moment of love and care for them. And in this portion of John, the theme that is through it is, if you follow me, you will live a life of love. You will live a life of humility. You will live a life of service to the other. And that this is at the heart of what it means to follow Christ. That these are not things that we do just as conveniences here and there. That they're not just happenstance that we stumble upon every now and again. But that this is who we are. This is a way of living, a way of loving the world and God and making it an active part of what it means to be in Christ and what it means to be human. And he symbolizes this in the act of form. <coughs> and that's what I want us to ask ourselves today. Are you and I foot washers? Are we the ones who go and seek to wash the feet of another? Or am I the one that sits down waiting for someone to come and wash mine? Is my attitude to go forth and find a place to express the love of Christ to the world? Or am I waiting for the world to shower that love on me? And I think with this example of Jesus, it becomes very, very evident that we are called to be the ones that are doing the showering putting others before ourselves. Now, if our, our custom is not to wash one another's feet, if that's not our custom today, then what does it look like? Well, it looks like simple things. It looks like a kind word or a compassionate ear to somebody who you can see is troubled. It looks like in the lunchroom or the break room or the cafeteria, instead of going to the people that you're always comfortable with, looking and finding that person that's off alone in the corner and looks like they just don't have a friend in the world, Go sit with them. It looks like sharing or offering a meal to somebody who needs it, to somebody who doesn't have enough to eat or who is grieving. It looks like visiting somebody that, that can't get out and about in their homebound. It looks like an encouraging word. It looks like stopping to help somebody jump their car when their battery runs out. It looks like helping somebody with a project at work or with a with a, a task at school, even when you don't feel like it. And we do it because we love. What, what I would like us to do through the season of lives is this. Um, every week we have that little thing in the bowl. On the answer, it says, whoever would be greatest must be servant of all. And each week we throw up on the wall during the offering what folks have torn off and submitted is how do you turn your faith through the week. What I would like us to do through the season of Lent is this. For each of us, Sunday to Sunday, to intentionally take the challenge issued through the message and live it out. And to do it so that on Sunday morning, each of us has at least one thing that we can put on here. And so for this week, it would be, how have I been a foot washer? How have I put somebody else before myself? How have I reached out and showed somebody the love of Christ in an honest and real way? And put that down. And then the next week, next week, listen to the sermon. And we'll do the same thing week after week. Because intentionality is what helps us to grow and deep in anything that we do. And so I would encourage us during this season of Lent to be intentional about our faith, 
about who we are in Christ, about how we live that out. Because here's the great thing about it. When you and I are intentional about living out our faith, not only does it happen more often, not only is the light of Christ shine brighter in the world, not only is the mission of Christ carried out more frequently in the world, but you and I, as the ones doing it, also start to intentionally look and see those places where God's hand moves and the kingdom of God breaks into this world, even if it's only for a moment, simply because we have answered the call of God on our lives. Amen?